trust that most people here, one of the reasons why we're here is because we all agree that there is a problem of radical Islam, not just in Britain, but in the world today, that a militant Islamist movement does exist. It's extremely powerful. Several countries are in its grip. Uh, it's growing, and it's, uh, it's growing in presence not only in individual countries, but in the UN and in communities in this country. It is real. It has a real presence, and it shouldn't be ignored. Now, um, that said, um, I now want to get on to insulting you. Um, this problem, I would submit, ladies and gentlemen, will not be solved by everyone in this hall here tonight. Even by everyone on this panel, noble sentiments, as I'm sure we'll all express, this hall and you will not solve this problem. You will not solve it on your own. It will require a whole range of people making their own individual points and their own individual positions to do that. And as maybe the only small C conservative on this panel, I, maybe even in the hall, I'd like to make the following point, which is how much some of us object to the idea that there are parameters for debate and parameters of what is respectable within debate that will be decided solely on the left. Uh, there are all sorts of criteria that can be applied to uh, your own personal judgment of what you think is right and wrong. But this uh, debate will have to be had a lot more frankly if we're going to win it. The first thing I'd say is this. Uh, just as in the Cold War, in the battle against communism, um, a, a vital component is a toolbox approach to defeating the enemy of Islamist extremism. Now, some of that will be people who uh, you and I don't like. There are standards and norms which we can certainly express but we should be exceedingly careful, I would submit, about where we draw those lines. Because before you know it, uh, you'll be chucking out people who may well have perfectly legitimate points to make and who may well have, believe it or not, a larger following than any of us here tonight could ever have. Are there places you draw the lines? Of course. I think everyone in this hall would be in agreement. The British National Party is an overtly racist organization. It always has been. There's not going to be a moment when it isn't. Nobody's going to join uh, who doesn't believe in those fundamentally racist principles of the party. Are there people like that who will jump on this bandwagon? Sure. But we're going to have to be extremely careful in who else we lump in uh, with them. Uh, we, we spend all of our time, and quite rightly, shouldn't stop doing it. Uh, differentiating out between different types of Islam, different types of Muslims, and so on and so forth. But the minute it's a group of white, middle-aged men, it's with huge delight that people decide, excellent, we will dismiss them as one single block, no need to investigate further. Let me give you an example. The English Defence League, a, a, an extraordinary phenomenon, which, by the way, in my opinion, wouldn't have occurred if, it ha if the government had have got a, 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 a grip on al Mujahirun, it only came about because the authorities didn't do anything about that particularly thuggish organization. These things have uh, uh, consequences. Um, the English Defence League, when they started protesting, had banners saying things like, you know, Sharia law discriminates against women. Sharia law is anti-gay. Well, I'm good with both of those sentiments. I'm sure most people in this room are. If you were ever going to have a grassroots response for non-Muslims to Islamism, that would be how you'd want it, surely. But, of course, we all know there are awkward things around this. There have been exposed links from the EDL with far-right organizations in individual cases, and maybe uh, uh, others will know more about this uh, uh, wider than that. But, you know, for instance, Louis Amis wrote a very interesting piece in Standpoint magazine some months ago after an investigation, and he, he said, and others have said, that as far as they can see within the EDL, they have tried to kick out BMP elements. Does that mean that uh, they aren't racist or they are I'm not making a definitive point? I'm just saying these things are extremely complex. 
and we ought to be careful before dismissing whole swathes of people. Thirdly, these groups stop the Islamization of Europe and stop the Islamization of America. I mean, I don't know enough about them, maybe as far as I can see, stop the Islamization of Europe only has a few members. Uh, um, and uh, in America, Robert Spencer is one of the directors. I happen to know Robert Spencer. I respect him. He's an, a very uh, a brilliant scholar and writer. Now, some people in this hall may disagree with him, may disagree with all sorts of things he says. Well, sure, but Mariam Namazi sitting beside me is a communist. I disagree with Mariam Namazi on a whole range of things. She disagrees with me because I'm a conservative. But I don't think that Mariam Namazi should be out of the debate. I don't think anyone who was once a member of the communist... I mean, I'm sitting on a panel with somebody who's a member of the communist. Communist Party. Does that mean in future I should never be given a platform? The 20th century had two dreadful totalitarianisms, fascism and communism. Some of the people who people in this hall would throw out from being ever allowed to speak are being thrown out because once they met somebody who once sat on a platform with somebody who was once a member of a fascist party. Well, I'm sitting on a platform with a communist. That would mean I could never again speak in public if there was any sense to this debate, but there isn't because people have this debate so ruddy badly, all spend their time polishing their halos. Yes, we're against racism. Yes, we're against fascism. We're against lots of things. Well, that was quite a bit there by Douglas Murray talking about what should be done in terms of trying to come up with ways to combat and to fight Islamism and Muslimism and Islamic fundamentalism, meaning the terrorist part of what is going on. And how do we fight against that extremism? Not against, as he basically talked about, not against the majority of those Muslims living in Western Europe, living in America, Australia, and other first world countries, basically, that are just going about their daily lives, trying to integrate with society, doing everything that everybody else is doing, getting up in the day, going to work, worrying about their kids, making sure they're going off to school, making sure that they have enough to eat, making sure that they're you know, taken care of, making sure they have enough money, maybe they can go on a vacation, integrating with society, having a little bit of their own culture, but mixing in with whatever cultures that they're around there, being good stewards, being good citizens of the country. He's not talking about those Muslims. But it doesn't take that many, it only takes a few to commit those acts of terror and terrorism that are completely not to be um, you know, allowed, obviously, at all. So what Douglas is trying to say is how do we go about you know, trying to solve this issue or what can we do? And he says, there's a toolbox. And he says, sometimes, he has said, but you got to be careful of some of the groups that you align yourselves with. And he basically said, like the BNP party in England, racist, I guess akin to the KKK over here, the white supremacist. That's not who you're going to align yourself with at all. But then he was talking about something about the EDL, which I don't know that much about but in which he's, you know, Douglas is saying that there have been some components. They said that they have tried to kick out the, the, raci the racist elements that have infiltrated into the EDL. And he was basically telling the crowd that if they know of some, uh, you know, other, you know, things that have happened, you know, uh, you know, to let them know about it. But he's talking about that. Robert Spencer, who I think, you know, I don't agree with anything that Robert Spencer has to say. I think some of his um, work is really, really far out there. And where he gets some of his um, data from, you know, how he extrapolates that in consensus and puts it together and the spin and the narrative. Okay, that's all well and good. He's got that right to do that. It doesn't mean that I've got to agree with everything. I don't agree with Douglas Murray on, 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 on many things. I think sometimes he goes, you know, uh, as a you know, with his words, or but then you know what? I do the same thing on, on, on certain times. Maybe people feel that I go a little bit too far, or I'm not defending somebody enough, or I'm not attacking somebody enough, or I'm not doing whatever it is. So that's just part and parcel of this whole conversation. But the whole idea here is that something needs to be done because one thing that people have to remember most of this Islamist terrorism 
and the terrorist acts that are occurring are Muslim on Muslim. Thousands upon thousands upon thousands of Muslims have been, uh, acts of violence, acts of terrorism have been perpetrated in Muslim countries against other Muslims, different factions of Muslims that have sectarian violence, all that thing, you know, that comes into play. So we're going to get to more with Douglas Murray, but before we do so, we just want to let you know you're watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I'm your host, Dr. Nasser, and if you haven't done so, <laughs> we don't want to go ahead and subscribe. No problems with that. But what I want to do every day is give you my political prescription from my political perspective on what happens when you've got social media, when you've got different viewpoints, you've got entertainment, you've got you know, science, religion, politics, government, policies, and they all come colliding together. Anyways, let's, get, let's hear some more from Douglas Murray on the topic at hand. A bit more than that, and a bit more of this halo polishing, if you're going to deal with that. And as I say, it'll leave you with one final thought on that. If this battle is going to be won, it will not be won solely by the people sitting in Conway Hall here tonight. It will be won by a lot of people. We will have to make judgments along the way. And we'll disagree with them. I'll disagree with Mariam. I'll disagree with Shiraz and all sorts of friends and colleagues. We'll disagree on individual cases and people. But the idea that you chuck whole swathes of people out of the debate is such a bloody left-wing thing to do. The left loves doing this all the time. The debate will be done on my terms. Well, how easy. And how surprising, unsurprising it is that the terms are always drawn around themselves. I hope we can do a bit better than that. Thank you. Let me just flag up a couple of things. It will not be possible to defeat uh, Islamist extremism whilst uh, denigrating, for instance, people in this country who are concerned about immigration. It's not possible because a very, very large proportion of people in this country are concerned about immigration. It tends to be the number one, or if not number one, two issue in polling in this country. So, as it were, those people who just say, you know, people who talk about immigration all the time, you know, those people aren't beyond the pale. They might be perfectly decent. They are, in most cases, perfectly decent people who are concerned about an issue. And I don't think it should be glibly dismissed any more than people who are concerned about demogra uh, demographics. There are people who have serious concerns about demographics because they're seriously concerned that the society they were born into is changing beyond recognition. That doesn't mean they should be dismissed as whack job kooks or racists. They might have a perfectly legitimate point. I think they do. The second thing, it, it was demonstrated by one of the people who... who you know, and just a quick point here, and Douglas is making this and that saying that people, when they bring up the fact about immigration, immediately, immediately, what happens? The left, the progressives, you know, every, the, the acolytes in media, the mainstream media, they attack, they attack. Even if that is coming, if it's coming from non-whites, they lump them in. We've seen that happen here in the United States of America, haven't we? Where you have black people and brown people being called white supremacists because they bring up the fact about immigration. They bring up the fact about demographics changing. And all Douglas is saying that if somebody brings that up, instead of basically just, you know, smacking them away and saying, oh, bigot, racist, homophobe, Islamophobe, you know, immigration phobe, you don't like immigrants, you don't like asylees, you don't like this, you don't like those people, you don't like their ethnicity, you don't like their color, you don't like their religion, you don't like their customs, you don't like their food. All these attacks come. Even if the person who's just asking the question whether they're white or they're non-white or a person of color. And that's what happens, folks, because that word stops people in their tracks. Nobody wants to be called a racist. Nobody wants to be called a bigot. Nobody wants to call, be called a blank phobe. Because most people, once they hear that, they shut up in their silence because you know what? It's a game stopper. But nowadays, there's a lot of people that have pushed through that and said, you're going to call me racist? Well, you're racist for calling me racist. And they fight back, and that's exactly what's needed. But for some people, just to bring up the question, 
and then you question the person for bringing it up is what his motive is, even if he's just asking the question, that's all Doug is talking about. And we need to move beyond that. It's always going to be out there, folks, but we need to move beyond that. Anyways, let's continue. Who said, you know, the gentleman there, talked about, you know, going to the protest of the Pope rally. If I may say so, this, I, I, you know, I, I wasn't there, I didn't approve of the protest because there were various things around it I think are complete guff. One of them is the fact that people love saying they went to the protest of the Pope thing. I, you know, the, the, the Pope, you know, the, 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 the sort of, you know, Pope's not, not, not on board with gay marriage. You know, I'm a gay man, I'd love to have gay marriage uh, uh, approved by the Catholic Church. But, you know, they're not going to. Meantime, I really, really wish that people would reserve their ire for the people who don't just want to stop me marrying, but want to throw me off a cliff. Much much better way to spend your time but of course people love it because they think oh i'll attack the islamists but then to be allowing allow myself to do that i can attack the pope to show i'm not a racist show me a monsignor grab me a cardinal and i and i can attack them because that will allow me this is left-wing nonsense again pedophile priests you said you know if you just stood there and said you know i mean i'm trying to protect to protect Muslims from paedophile imams, people go, oh, how Islamophobic. And it actually, in that case, it probably would be. But you say paedophile priests and smear the Catholic priesthood, and it's not a problem. And thirdly, finally, getting toward the end, a lot of this problem comes down, and the, thing, the, the question we didn't get on to tonight, the, 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 the fact is this. At the end of the Second World War, the Nazi leaders were tried and executed. At the end of the Cold War, it didn't happen. One of the biggest problems we have is the fact that it wasn't resolved. The people who did, who did the largest massacres, the largest number of deaths caused by any movement in history were not brought to trial. The Guardian, the leading left-wing newspaper, had Richard Gott, one of its editors, a paid member of the KGB, a paid KGB agent who said, oh, it was just a bit of a laugh. Oh, and it still is just a bit of a laugh. Because if it's communism, it's a bit of a laugh. 70 million dead here and there, a bit of a laugh. Uh, 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 and so on. So please, let's adjust our fucking values. Um, and finally... Well, well, well. I guess we could just leave it at that. When Douglas Murray just say, we need to just adjust... Let's just adjust our effing values. Let's adjust our effing values. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because... One of the things is that it's okay to attack Christianity. It's okay in some instances where people will give a pass if you're attacking Judaism, but you attack Islam, you attack Muslims, you attack you know any other uh, you know ethnic group or whatever. Oh, off limits. You can't even talk about it. You can't even bring up serious questions that are occurring you know, within uh, that ethnicity, within that culture, within that religion, that you just want to ask some questions about. Why is this happening? Who is involved? Is this prevalent? Are there a lot of people? Is it just a small minority? Is it a large minority? What's going on here? When you ask those questions, you're just immediately shut down. And as he basically said, in order to be the virtue signalers out there, you want to be virtue signaling? Okay, fine. I'm going to do Well, then I'm going to go after the Pope because I went after the Pope. So you can't call me a racist, you can't be call me a bigot, you can't be call me a single issue on this thing here, because I attacked the Jewish people, I attacked the synagogues, I attacked, um, you know, the, um, you know, the, uh, you know, you know, the rabbis, you know, in terms of that thing. I went ahead and I'm talking about this stuff. I challenged them. You know, you're doing all this rhetorically. But it's game on to go ahead and go basically, you know, talk against Christians, talk against Christian values, you know, talk against the church, say things, uh, you know, bring up the, the uh, pedophilia within the priesthood and say, take a look at that. See how bad they are? That's okay to talk about. But as Douglas said, you bring that thing up and if you said, you know, you want to talk about pedophilia among imams, oh my goodness, you can't talk about that. Do you have any proof? What are you talking about? And there, and there's stories and stories of that thing even happening, um, you know, with him. It's it's in everything. It's going to happen. Unfortunately, P 
people are people within even the societal structures that they're in. It's not pre- now. Obviously, it's a whole new level when you're talking about. It, it, this is completely going off the off the topic and whatever. But, anyways, we'll just end it right there. We appreciate you taking the time to watch. That'll be for another topic one day. We take we appreciate you taking the time to watch. You've been watching the Doctor Nasser Shake Show. I've been your host. My name is Dr. Nasser. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel, like, share, and follow us. You know what to do. I'll leave you with my final thought, which is when you're right, you're right. And when you're left, you're wrong. Until next time, folks, take care and stay safe.